Hello friends, here I am going to discuss intravenous anesthesia and pre-anesthetic medication as the continuation of my lecture series of general anesthesia. If you have not gone through my previous lectures of general anesthesia series, general principles of general anesthesia and inhalational anesthetic agent, kindly go and watch on YouTube, kindly like and subscribe my YouTube channel. Now coming to today's topic intravenous anesthetics. Uh, it is a group of fast acting compounds that are used to induce complete sedation or a state of impaired awareness after intravenous administration. We should remember intravenous anesthetic agents are used only for induction. There should be one arm brain circulation time. It means an intravenous anesthetic agents should reach brain within a minute of injection. It is accountable for its rapid induction and another point is it should not used for maintenance of general anesthesia. The maintenance of general anesthesia will be done by inhalational anesthetic agents. It can be used alone or supplemented with analgesic agents and muscle relaxants. The ideal properties for intravenous anesthetic agent there should be drug compatibility or we can say it in another word it should be more water soluble the stability of the solution it should not get denatured inside injection series there should be painless injections and no veno irritation or local tissue damage as many of the intravenous drugs causing thrombophlebitis and local tissue necrosis it should not augment any histamine release there should be rapid and a smooth onset of action without causing any excitation it rapidly metabolized to its inactive metabolite there should be a steep dose to minimize its titrability there should not or minimal tissue ac accumulation there should be safe or we can say intravenous anesthetic agent should be safe to acute cardio cardiovascular event and respiratory depression it it would be able to decrease in cerebral metabolism and intracranial pressure and another one is there should be rapid and smooth return to consciousness the main important point for the ideal intravenous anesthetic is it there should be absence of any post-operative nausea and vomiting amnesia post anesthetic psychomimetic reactions dizziness headache and prolonged sedation there are four varieties of available intravenous anesthetic agents fast inducers slow inducers neurolept analgesia and dissociative anesthetic agents coming to fast inducers these are barbiturates or non barbiturates hypental and methoxetals are barbiturates and propofol etomidate dexmethodomidine are non barbiturates Slow inducers are benzodiazepines. Neurolept analgesia, which is given in combination with fentanyl and dorperidol. Dissociative anesthesia, as we know, it is ketamine. All barbiturates are fast inducers. It is thiopental sodium and methoxetal. It is potent anesthetic agent, but weak analgesic in actions. All barbiturates can cause acute toxicity and it can be diagnosed as apnea, cough, chest wall spasm, laryngoespasm and bronchospasm. All barbiturates are highly lipid soluble which quickly enters into the CNS in less than one minute and produce unconsciousness. Further, very rapidly it redistributes to other parts of the body tissue like skeletal muscle and ultimately adipose tissue which acts as a reservoir. As we can appreciate in this diagram, after injection the viability of the drug is 100% in the blood and then gradually the concentration increases in the brain and further distribution occurs for skeletal muscle and then adipose tissue. Now coming to thiopentane sodium, it is a barbiturate, ultra short acting barbiturates, water soluble, alkaline in nature, dose dependent suppression of CNS activity 
and its dose is 3 to 5 mg per kg IV in 2.5% of solution, rapid onset of action within 20 seconds and short duration of action. Pharmacokinetically, redistribution occurs which terminated the effect not by metabolism but by redistribution. There is hepatic metabolism and elimination half-life is 7 to 12 hours. Therefore, thiopentane sodium is not advi advisable to repeat within 12 hours because it can cause toxicity. CNS depression by the thiopentane sodium can persist longer than 12 hours. The risk of venospasm is there if accidentally we inject into artery. There is depressed cerebral blood flow and it do not cause increase intracranial tension, rather it decreases intracranial pressure. Thiopentane sodium can cause laryngospasm in pre-anesthetic course when respiratory secretion and other pre-existing irritations are present. It is treated by atropin. There is chemical interaction between succinylcholine and thiopentane sodium, so it should not be mixed in the same syringe. There is chances of local tissue necrosis and gangrene, so avoid intra-arterial spillage during administration. In post-anesthetic course, due to its weak analgesic action, it should be supplemented with another analgesic agent. There is another important point as it, pre it can precipitate acute intermittent porphyria in susceptible individual. So, it is contraindicated in such patient. The advantages of thiopentane sodium rapid induction, it does not sensitize myocardium to adrenaline. There is no or less chances of nausea and vomiting. It can be used alone for short operations. Apart from anesthesia, it can be used for uncontrolled seizure episode, psychiatry patients and narcoanalysis for criminals. There is also some disadvantages of thiopentane sodium. There is depth of anesthesia difficult to judge. Pharyngeal and laryngeal reflexes can persist and if there is respiratory depression then patient may land up into apnea and we have to support patient with controlled ventilation. There is chances of rapid hypotension and patient may lead into shock and hypovolemia. We have to care during administration of thiopentane sodium. It is poor analgesic in action and also there is poor muscle relaxant action. There is chances of gangrene and necrosis and also we can see severing and delirium in some patients. Propofol is non-barbiturate fast inducer. It is classed in phenol derivative IV sedative hypnotics. It is widely used and has replaced thiopentyl as the first choice of anesthesia induction and sedation because it produces a euphoric feeling in a patient and does not cause post anesthetic nausea and vomiting. It has also poor analgesic activity and it is GABA receptor agonist. It is used as oily liquid as 1% emulsion. Propofol causes rapid induction and smooth onset of action within very short period of 15 to 45 seconds and effect lasts for 5 to 10 minutes. There is rapid distribution and distribution half life is only 2 to 4 minutes. There is also short elimination half life of 100 minutes. Propofol is extensively metabolized by hepatic gluconide conjugations and 88% of administered dose appears in the urine. Propofol is a very good anesthetic agent due to its rapid induction, extensive hepatic metabolism and short elimination half-life. Therefore, it can be used also for maintenance of anesthesia. The dose of induction therapy is 2 mg per kg body weight as bolus and maintenance 9 mg per kg per hour as intravenous infusion. It can decrease blood pressure without depressing the myocardium 
and it also reduces intracranial pressure. The advantages of propofol, it is considered as total intravenous anesthesia. It has rapid induction. It can be used for induction and maintenance of general anesthesia. And it can be also used as sedation in ICU setup. It does not sensitize myocardium to adrenaline. There is no nausea and vomiting. It can be used alone for short operations. There are few disadvantages also. Induction, apnea, hypotension and bradycardia could be there. There is dose dependent respiratory depression may seen in some patients and pain during injections which can be managed by administration of local anesthetic agent in combination. The first propofol is a water soluble prodrug which is claimed to be cause less pain during intravenous injections and it is hydrolyzed by endothelial alkaline phosphatase to propofol. There is rare but very serious syndrome with propofol infusion which is known as propofol infusion syndrome which results after long term high dose propofol infusion. It is more commonly seen in pediatric population and also the higher risk of patient are who is receiving vasopressure and glucocord therapy in critical care. The sign, of, uh, sign and symptoms of the propofol infusion syndromes are hyperkalemia, hypertriglyceridemia, rhabdomyolysis, metabolic acidosis, renal failure, cardiac failure and green color urine may be herald sign which is unspecific for non-localized cystitis. The management of propofol infusion syndrome is only supportive. First, we have to stop propofol, then correct metabolic abnormalities and support for vital function. It may often leads to fatality or mortality of the patient. The another non-barbiturate fast inducer is etomidate. It is short acting intravenous anesthetic agent used for induction of general anesthesia. It causing sedation for short procedures such as reduction of dislocated joint, tracheal intubation, cardioversion, electroconvulsive therapy. It is also GAVA agonist. It has rapid induction. Induction dose is only 0.3 mg per kg intravenous. Minimal change in cardiac function. It can mild decrease in systemic vascular resistance. It decreases respiratory rate and also act as respiratory depression. It can lower seizure threshold and it is considered as pro-conversion. There is no analgesic action of edomidate and it can cause pain on injection as propofol. There is also post-operatively nausea and vomiting and prolonged administration may inhibit 11 beta hydroxylase with, which can cause adrenal suppression. Benzodiazepines are slow inducers and in addition to pre-anesthetic medication, benzodiazepines are now frequently used for induction, maintenance and supplementing anesthesia as well as for conscious sedation. The midazolam, lorazepam and diazepam are mainly used for these actions. It is used in congestion with anesthetic to sedate the patients. It is GABA agonist and often used as pre-anesthetic medication for, to produce anxiolysis. Metabolites are excreted in urine and the reversal agent for benzodiazepines are flumagenil. Within 5 minutes of administration of midazolam, showing its effect, its half-life is only 2 hours. The another benzodiazepine is lorazepam, which starts showing its action within 30 minutes and half-life is longer 12 to 18 hours. The diazepam showing onset of action of 1 to 5 minutes, but half-life is extremely variable. 20 to 100 hours due to its active metabolite. Benzodiazepines has three main systemic effect. First one is cardiovascular effect which shows mild cardiac depression. 
in respiratory effect it decreases response to hypoxia and hypercarbia another it effects generally not clinically significant unless paired with other depression the cns effect it decreases the cerebral blood flow it decreases the cerebral metabolic rate of oxygen it also decreases the intracranial pressure it also acts as anti epileptic agent and it does not associated with any analgesic action now coming to another important group of intravenous anesthesia is neurolept analgesia which is also known as conscious sedation neuroleptics are antipsychotics they are group of drug which induce a state of apathy and mental detachment in which the patient is mildly sedated and uncaring about his surroundings it is characterized by calmness psychic indifference and intense analgesia without total loss of consciousness it is associated with decreased motor functions suppressed autonomic reflexes cardiovascular instability with mild amnesia it causes drowsiness but patient responds to command it uses in combination with diazepam used in diagnostic endoscopic and angiographic procedure it is exempt to spinal and nerve block anesthesia there are two main components for neuroleptic analgesia one is neuroleptic component another one is opioid component in neuroleptic component droperidol and alternative drugs are midazolam flumazenil ketamine propofol in opioid component it is fentanyl alternative drugs are alfentanyl sufentanyl and remifentanyl the commonly used combination for neuroleptic analgesia is fentanyl and droperidol droperidol 2.5 mg and fentanyl site rate 50 mg in 1 ml given intravenously causes complete analgesia and amnesia significant for surgical procedure without marked hypnosis the onset of anesthesia is very slow and duration of action is 30 to 50 minutes the major advantages of this procedure are smooth onset and rapid post anesthetic recovery less danger to hypotension and other circulatory disturbances suppression of vomiting and coughing continued analgesia in post operative period and availability of patient cooperation during the operative procedure droperidol is buterofen and derivative like haloperidol its pharmacological actions are similar to first generation antipsychotic which is chlorpromazine it has short duration of action 2 to 3 hours and it is more potent than haloperidol apart from it typical behavioral effect of calming droperidol has antipsychotic action and also alpha adrenergic blocking actions it is like all neuroleptic agents it can produce extra pyramidal side effects fentanyl is another commonly used drug to produce neuroleptic analgesia this belongs to group of phenylpiperidines it is a morphine like opioid analgesic widely used as supplementary analgesic agent in inducing general anesthesia it has morphine like effect and it suppresses the respiratory and cough centers and also causes nausea vomiting and constriction of people it is 100 times more potent than morphine it has shorter duration of action and given intramuscular and iv injection of 2 to 20 mg per kg body weight rapidly produces profound analgesia lasting for about 30 minutes and these actions can be antagonized by specific opioid antagonist naloxone the advantages of fentanyl is it has a smooth onset of action and rapid recovery there is suppression of vomiting and cough centers it, it is used in commanded operation there is less chances of fall in blood pressure and there is also no cardiac sensitization to adrenaline the disadvantage is it can cause respiratory depression it can also increase the tone of chest muscle 
and causes chest wall rigidity. It can also cause nausea, vomiting and itching during recovery. Other opioids which is used in combination to produce neuroleptanalgesia are olfentanil, sufentanil, ramifentanil. Sometimes it is used as IV analgesic in short operations due to its brief duration of actions. Sumafentanil is the most potent opioid analgesic. It has thousand times more potent than morphine. This can be also used as co-inducing agent. Remifentanil it is, is a synthetic opioid and it has rapid onset of action. It metabolizes rapidly by esterase in the plasma and muscles. As a result, its duration of action is extremely short with less respiratory depression. All opioids have potent analgesic action but poor amnesic activity, commonly used together with other anesthetic agents. The route of administration for opioid analgesics are intravenous, epidural, intrathecally or intramuscular. Ketamine belongs to phencyclidine or phenylcyclohexylpepridine derivative. Phenylcyclohexylpepridine group may cause hallucination, distorted perception of sound and violent behavior. It is short acting anesthetic agent and it causes mild altering effect. It induces a dissociated state in which patient is unconscious but may appear to be awake and does not feel any pain. It has good analgesic effect. Ketamine is classed under dissociative anesthesia. It is a state characterized by immobility, amnesia and analgesia with light sleep or mild sedation and feeling of dissociation from one's own body and mind and the surroundings. It acts as an MDA receptor antagonist and the main site of action of ketamine is cortex and subcortical areas and the dose prescribed for ketamine is 5 to 10 mg per kg body weight intramuscularly or 1 to 2 mg intravenously. There are two sites of action of ketamine. First one is brain and ketamine blocks the NMDA receptor in cortical areas, amygdala and hippocampal areas. Whereas in the spinal cord, it acts on the dorsal horn of the spinal cord uh, because NMDA receptor present over there and uh, ketamine antagonize that NMDA receptor in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. Ketamine is potent bronchodilator and it is beneficial in patients with bronchial asthma. It is used in children and elderly patients for the short procedures. It is not widely used due to its increased cerebral blood flow and it may induce hallucination, especially in young adults. It is potent cardiovascular stimulant and it is contraindicated in cardiac patients like hypertensive, ischemic heart disease and stroke patients. Now coming to the uses of ketamine, it can be used in uh, hypovolemic shock because it causes the sympathetic nervous system stimulation which ultimately result, results into the increased heart rate, blood pressure and cardiac output, head and neck surgery, bronchial asthma and uh, another use is uh, very important for short surgical procedure like burn dressing, forceps delivery, breech extraction, manual removal of placenta and the dentistry. It is commonly used for angiography and cardiac catheterization with diazepam and it is very popular for daycare surgical procedures. There are few disadvantages of ketamine because it shows emergence phenomenon in 50% of patients uh, which is characterized by coughing, sore throat and dysphonia. It cannot be used in hypertensive patient because of sympathetic stimulation. It can increase intraocular tension and intracranial pressure so it cannot be used for glaucoma patient or in the stroke patients. There are limb movements and nystagmus. There could be psychosis and schizophrenia like symptoms. Uh, ketamine has poor muscle relaxation properties. It can stimulate uterus and rarely it can cause laryngoespasm. Now uh, next intravenous anesthetic agent is dextmetotomidine which is uh, now uh, being commonly used in intensive care settings and uh, operation theatres. It is highly selective alpha 2 adrenergic agonist 
and eight times more specific than clonidine. It binds to pre and post synaptic adrenergic neuron in the central nervous system and it affects the dose dependently reversed by uh, administration of a selective alpha 2 antagonist such as atipamazole. It is classed under non barbiturate fast inducers. It causes the CNA stimulation of parasympathetic outflow and inhibition of sympathetic outflow from the locus cellulose in the brain stem and it causes sedation and anxiolysis. It uh, activates alpha 2A adenoreceptor in locus cellulose in the brain stem which further results into the calcium channel inhibition and potassium channel opening uh, which results into hyperpolarization of excitable neurons and which ultimately resulted into the uh, sedation and anesthesia. There is another effect like primary analgesic effect and potentiation of opioid induced analgesia results from the activation of alpha 2 adrenergic receptor in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord and the inhibition of substance P release. Pharmacokinetically dextmetodomidine has uh, rapid distribution. A steady state uh, volume of distribution is 118 liter. There is onset of action by IV route is 15 to 30 minutes. Tmax uh, is 1 hour after continuous intravenous infusion. There is high protein binding 94% uh, with uh, serum albumin and alpha 1 glycoprotein. It follows the zero order kinetics and T half is 2 to 2.5 hours. It metabolized by liver through glucuronides conjugation and biotransformation by uh, oxidation cytochrome P450 enzyme system and uh, there is 95% of urinary excretion. Dexmetodominin causing sedation. There is vasoconstriction because of uh, activation of alpha 2B receptor over uh, cerebral blood vessels and peripheral vasculature. There is also vasodilatation because of activation of alpha 2A receptor over the peripheral smooth muscle cells. There is a decreased heart rate because of its uh, vagomimetic action. There is a decrease in tachycardia because it blocks the cardio accelerator nerve. It has anti-severing actions, analgesic actions and diuretic action also. It has sedative, analgesic, sympatholytic and anxiolytic effect without causing significant respiratory depression. It produ produces cooperative sedation. It allows for easy awakening, facilitates routine patient assessment as it allows the patient to interact with healthcare professionals. Often used as continuous infusion for conscious sedation in operation theater or intensive care settings or it used as exam to general anesthesia but prevents memory formation. Now talking about cardiovascular adverse effect it causes uh, significant bradycardia which uh, further leads to heart block and it also causes uh, hypotension and withdrawal effect may cause reflex hypertension, arterial fibrillation, hypovolemia. Another adverse effects are decreased urine output, pleural effusion, hypocalcemia, nausea, gerostomia, hyperglycemia and dry mouth. There are two stages of complications of anesthesia. During anesthesia, it may cause uh, respiratory depression, salivation, respiratory secretion, cardiac arrhythmia, fall in blood pressure, aspiration, laryngoespasm and asphyxia, awareness, delirium and convulsions, fire and explosion when uh, general anesthesia is concerned. After anesthesia, it may cause uh, nausea and vomiting, post-operative nausea and vomiting, persisting sedation, pneumonia, organ damage like uh, liver and kidney damage, nerve palsies, emergence of delirium and cognitive defect. Now coming to our today's next topic is pre-anesthetic medication. It is the term applied to the drug used prior to the administration of uh, an anesthetic agent to make anesthesia safer and more agreeable to patients. The aim of pre-anesthetic medication is to provide relief or anxiety to the patient, amnesia for pre and post operative events, analgesia, decreased secretions, anti effect and decrease acidity and volume of gastric juice. There are uh, few drugs 
we can use as pre anesthetic medication uh, the sedative anxiolytics opioids anticholinergic h2 blocker and antiemetics these are the main drugs we are using as uh, pre anesthetic medications we should not forget 7 a's as pre anesthetic medication to produce anxiolytic effect or sedation we are using diazepam lorazepam midazolam or promethazine to produce amnesia we are using lorazepam third one is for anticholinergic action we can use atropine or glycopyrrhates fourth one is anti acid h2 blockers or proton pump inhibitor like ranitidine ranitidine famotidine pantoprazole rabeprazole fifth one is for antiemetic action metoclopramide domperidon or ondansetron to produce analgesia or opioid analgesia we are using morphine or its congener the last one is for anti allergic actions anti histaminics first generation or second generation we are using as pre anesthetic this is the summary of pharmacokinetic uh, data for intravenous anesthetic agent uh, kindly pause this slide and go through in detail which i have already discussed this is also the summary of pharmacodynamic effect of commonly used intravenous anesthetic agent kindly pause my slide and go through in detail thank you for watching my video if you have any query then comment kindly like and subscribe my youtube channel thank you